King and Vintage Treasures. Um, for today's video, we're going to be testing some items that are possibly silver or gold or have diamonds in them. I have everything set up already. Um, I purchased a Diamond Selector 2 for testing diamonds, and it can also tell the difference between whether something is a gemstone or if it's glass, so it has multi-purpose. Um, I got my acids for testing the silver and gold, and that came with a little testing stone. Um, I got I got a ring sizer because um, I didn't have one of those, so I went ahead and purchased one. And then I got everything set up for testing, got my paper towels, um, got to make sure you wear some gloves with uh, the acid because if it gets on your hands it can burn you and we don't want that to happen. Um, I would suggest uh, put, putting it down on uh, an old towel or something and then using paper towels to clean your stone off with because I've seen some other videos where they use like a good washcloth or something and the acid will actually bleach out your uh, your washcloth or your towels so you might want to use some older uh, items for that or consider wearing some older clothing that you don't care if it um, gets ruined or not. Um, I'm not too worried about it. I'm not going to get crazy with it, but um, I'm kind of excited. I tested out my um, diamond tester already. It works really good, and I have some exciting stuff to tell you about that, but I'll just go ahead and show you when I cut the screen so uh, you can see all the close-up action. But I really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in today and thanks for joining me. This is my first time doing this, so bear with me. I might um, make a few mistakes or take a little bit longer doing things because I'm not really sure um, how this is going to go. Um, but I'm super excited to find out if I have silver and gold and diamonds. So. Here we go. All right, guys. So what we're going to be looking at first is we're going to be using the Diamond Selector 2 to test for our diamonds. We're also going to try it out on some of the other stones and see what happens with that. Um, how I calibrated this, and they give you a little chart on the back to go by but it, the smaller the stone the higher the calibration needs to be and I would assume that everybody would be testing their diamonds in a room temperature environment so you're pretty much going to be going down um, the middle section here um, so most of my stones are going to fall under a half a carat so we're going to be going to a number four for our calibration. I think that's a pretty average one. Now the larger the stone, the smaller the calibration that you need to go to. So for the larger stones, we'll have to go down to a level two to do those stones. But uh, for the first part, we're gonna do the, the smaller stones. And this was super easy to use. You just um, open it up here and you have your battery compartment. It takes a nine volt battery. You just pop it in, turn it on. It only takes it about 20, 30 seconds to heat up. And we're gonna do that now. So you just turn it on here. And when the second red light comes on, that means it's ready to go. It's super, super easy. Now, while it's heating up, I'm gonna talk to you about um, how I found whether this is accurate and I used pieces of jewelry that I already own and I used pieces of jewelry that I know are real. This is a real star sapphire and there's real diamonds on either side of that. This is simulated opal with cubic zirconia surrounding it and this one I'm just curious to see how this will um, monitor on here. Uh, this is a mystic topaz and the stones on here. I'm not sure 
um, whether they are diamond or cubic zirconia. This was a gift and I received it a long time ago. So I, I don't remember what um, stones were used in this. So first off, I'm going to show you, we're gonna calibrate it. We're gonna turn it up to a level four. So there'll be green bars that'll show, see? And we're on a level three and we're up to a four. And once we get up to a level four, it's a little bit sensitive, so you have to be careful. But you make sure there's a little metal plate on the back. You make sure your finger's on the metal plate. And then you want to put the stone directly onto the little tip and press slightly. Now see how the sapphire moved up three bars? A sapphire is going to hit within that seven or eight range. So that is a real sapphire. We know that, okay? And went back down to the four. Now if we go to the diamond, oh, we touched metal. That beep, beep, beep sound, that's a diamond. It goes all the way up until the eight range. If it goes eight or above, that's a diamond. So we know we got real diamonds on here. You gotta be careful, especially with the small ones. It's hard to get them exactly on there. But it doesn't hurt it. It just lets you know you're not touching this stone. You're touching metal. All right, let's see if we can get the other side. And it goes all the way up to that eight again. So we know we've got diamonds. So this guy is genuine sapphire, genuine diamond. All right, now we're gonna try out the fake one. Okay, watch where the opal goes. Oh, let's get him back down. We gotta calibrate him back down to a four. Oop. Okay. We got him back on four bars. Let's put it on the opal. Okay, see it didn't move at all. Not a bit. Let's see what happens with the cubic zirconia. One bar, it moved one bar, and that's it. We'll try another one, just for fun. And you don't have to press very hard with this. You just have to be real gentle because you can bend the, uh, the little metal prong at the end. But see, it went up one bar. All right, so opal, nothing. That I don't even think the opal is a stone that they used for that. And then the little cubic zirconias. Yep, you can see that all the fakeness of that. Okay, let's try our mystic topaz and see what happens with that. Look at that, it went up to a seven. Okay, so we know that's a real gemstone. Now see these diamond testers, they're good. They're not just good for telling you, you know, um, whether it's a diamond or not, you can tell if something is a real stone or if it's glass, it's going to tell you that and you just have to pay attention to your monitor. So for 10 bucks, you can't beat it. Let's see if I can hit these little tiny diamond chips. Oh, they're so little. These are real little. Oh, oh, come on guy. Oh. These guys might be too little to do it with. Okay, they are diamond. These are diamonds in here. All right, so that's good. Now I know that my ring I've had all these years is diamonds and mystic topaz and not cubic zirconia. Okay, so let's do this other ring. This is the ring that I got from my thread up box. And you can go back and watch that video if you're interested. I got a lot of good stuff in that video. Let's find out if that is a blue sapphire. I already know because I looked earlier. But for your entertainment purposes, look, it only went up one bar. One bar and that's it. So that, my friends, would not be a sapphire. 
that's some sort of lab created simulant we don't know what but we know it's not sapphire now let's try these little clear stones and see what happens with them see oh they only went up one one bar all right so we don't have real gemstones in there so that guy's a no-go for stones but we are going to test him for gold because i do believe on the inside after i cleaned it it does look like it's uh, marked 18 karat gold filled so we are going to test him for gold all right the next next guy that's up is our necklace and on this little pendant let's see let me get this recalibrated he's back down at five now I don't think he's more than a half carat. I, I don't think he's a half carat. We're going to leave it set where it is. Let's see how far he travels up the scale. One, two. Okay, so we got two bars off of him. So that very well could be a topaz. It's not telling us what type of stone it is, but it is telling us it's stone. It's not a cubic zirconia. All right, let's try the little guy and this little clear stone right above. Let's see what he does. Oh, uh, he went up high. All right. I don't want to touch the metal. No. Okay, so it looks like he's a cubic zirconia as well. Or possibly a white sapphire. Okay. So he 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 ran up there pretty high. So that's a that's genuine stone in there. That's not uh it's not a diamond, but we know it's not glass, and we know it's probably not uh well, it's not going to be plastic. So we know it's not plastic. We know it's not glass. We know it's stone. So that's good information. All right, here is the big one. Here's the one that we're all going to get excited about. You remember this bracelet? And I was like, oh, you guys, it's probably cubic zirconia because all the stones are a cloudy color. Yeah. Silly me. Uh-huh. Diamond. Diamond. And they're they're super tiny. But they are the real deal. Let me see if I can find a good one. All right, I keep hitting the metal. Come on. Sorry. These stones are so tiny. No, nope. come on. Yep. Uh-huh. Quit touching the metal. Oh. Mm -mm. They're so little. You see that, guys? All of them. They're all diamonds. So, this whole bracelet is covered in tiny diamonds. Mm, yeah, 
The only thing is, I don't know what kind of metal they're set in, so we're going to have to test that. But I am hoping that it is platinum. If this is platinum and diamonds, I'm going to the jeweler with this baby. But I will be one happy mama if that is platinum. Well, even white gold. I'll take white gold. But this is the one that had it had a mark and the mark looks like a diamond there's like a little tiny diamond in here and then it has gu or cu i think it's cu and i kind of i don't know how i feel about that because i know cu on the elemental scale stands for copper but i don't know why they would put diamonds in a copper bracelet but we shall see um, I think that was everything for the stones that I wanted to show you. Um, the next bit I'm going to set up here for doing the acid test. So I will see you in a couple seconds and we will check out what's silver and what's gold. Alright, so we are back for testing the silver and gold items. Um, I'm making sure I put on my gloves because I have seen some very bad things happen in these videos where people are testing with this acid and they get it on their hands. So I don't want that to happen. And we've got my little testing stone. He's only a two by two, he's real small. I hope you'll be able to see that okay. If not, I'll, I'll raise it up and I think you'll be able to see okay once I raise it up. The first thing I wanna test is this bracelet. And I'm going to test it for the platinum first. I wanna try to use as little acid as possible to save myself, you know, um, on the acid. So we're going to go ahead and scrape this onto our stone. And just because I'm curious, I want to see how much that actually takes off. It doesn't look like it really did anything. I just used the very corner piece of it. And I, I guess that looks kind of a silverish color. So... Hopefully that's a good sign. It didn't turn a copper color. You might have to press a little harder to see if it's plated. But let's go ahead and I'm using my platinum solution for this. And there's already a little bit that's leaking out. So let's cover that. See what happens. That's quite a bit. And I believe we have to wait a few seconds. And I can still see it. I don't know if you all can still see it from your view. We'll wait. I might try it again, because as I said, I have not done this before so I don't know I don't know what to expect especially for the platinum I've seen on the gold and I've seen on the silver but I don't know what to expect for the platinum all right so let's try that again And it doesn't look like it takes much. You just want to barely put it on there. There we go. That's better. Now I can see my line.
and it does look like it's starting to eat it away. And starting to disappear. You see that? Mm, but I can still see part of it. But as the, the seconds go by, it is starting to eat it away. So I don't believe that that is platinum. Okay. So, let's try for gold. It could be white gold. We don't know. I have to open up my tin carrot. So let's make another scrape. And we're going to go in with the 10 carat. So far, so good. Can you all see the line? It is still very clearly on there. So it looks like we are looking at gold. All right. So we know we at least got 10 karat gold. All right, so let's go up to the 14 karat. And make another scrape. As soon as it touched it, it disappeared with the 14 carat. And I'm going to do it one more time with the 10 carat just to make sure. That's so crazy though that it's not marked as 10 carat. Okay, one more time with the 10 carat. It's sticking. So this is at least 10 carat. It's definitely not 14 but it is at least 10 karat gold. So 10 karat gold with diamonds. Pretty good.
might use, I'm going to put some 18K. You're supposed to use the um, higher acids to clean your stone off. When I first opened the bag up, I was like, whew, because that acid definitely has a smell to it. And it's not a pleasant smell. All right, so I'm curious about our necklace here because it is marked as nine karat gold. So I don't know if it's going to completely disappear with the... Um, the 10 karat acid but we're going to test the clasp and we're going to see what happens with the 10 karat I mean this could completely disappear I don't know some of them I've seen where it still stays faintly on there It looks like it's staying. And it looks pretty solid too. So maybe the chain is a higher carrot than what the pendant is. Well, at least the clasp. Interesting. Get all that off of there. I think I'm going to make two lines. One for the chain and one for the pendant. Okay, and I've seen that I'm going to do it, wind it around your finger, and then do your scraping. It's easier, or make a ball out of it. Oh, it's taking my glove. Alright, so we're going to make a little ball out of our chain. If I can, I need to pull my gloves up. Okay, so that's the chain, and let's do the pendant over here. Now look at how the chain looks. Like, this actually looks like a gold color, and this looks more like a coppery color. Okay, so we'll put it on. Here and see what happens, and I'm gonna put a little on here and see what happens. Now it looks like the chain one is starting to fade out but it's still visible and it looks like the pendant is still pretty solid but yeah I can see it pretty clearly and the chain is very faint but the pendant is very solid. So the chain might even be like an 8 carat. But the whole piece it does look like is gold filled. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that off.
All right, so that's a positive, positive result. All right, so this next portion is this necklace, and this was from my, ooh, this was Shop Goodwill. Or was this uh, my eBay? Mm, I think this might have been from my first eBay um, haul, this necklace. And it's 14 karat gold filled. But we're going to test, we're going to test the clasp, and we're going to test the chain, and then we're going to test the pendant. So we got the clasp. And let's get this chain in a little ball. Ugh, I don't want to tangle it. Okay, so we got the chain and the pendant. Alright, so we've got clasp, chain, and pendant, and they're supposed to be 14 karat. Let's go ahead and run 10k across it and see what happens. And they're all still visible. Okay, now let's try the 14K. Oh, I believe our necklace is a liar because all of them disappeared. They all stayed with the 10K, but they all disappeared with the 14. Mm. Interesting. Oh, it's smoking. It's smoking. All right, so this necklace is not 14K. Uh, this is actually 10K. All right. Let's try out our ring and see if it is what it says it is. All right, let's start off with the 10. Because it could be a liar too. If our necklace was a liar, our ring could be a liar. Ah, my glove is stuck in the bottle. <laughs> no. Okay, make sure I didn't poke a hole in it. Okay. We're good. All right, so 10K is good. We can still see the lines. Let's go to the 14K. I just want to make a little tiny daddy poo. Ooh, it's smoking. <coughs> Smelly smoke. Mmm. Now I can see, I can still see the very outline of it at 14, but I'm starting to doubt that it is 18K. I'm doubting that it's 18, 
but let's put a little 18 on there and see what happens. I bet it completely disappears. Yeah, it's gone. It is completely gone. Yep, but the 14K, there you can still see the lines in the 14K, just barely, just barely. So that ring is not 18K. They lied, they lied. Okay, now I have this bracelet. I haven't showed you the items that I got from this haul yet, but I believe these are all coral. But the clasp is marked 14K. So we're going to see if that's for reals. Or if they're telling us a big fat whopper too. But this one is old. This is an old bracelet. So I would have to say that this one is probably for reals. Okay, so we got the clasp. And I'm going to try the um, jump ring as well. Now see these look gold. They don't they do look gold. But let's try 10k first. Okay. Okay, they're standing up to the 10k nicely. And we're going to go ahead and try the 14. Oh, don't run. Don't run. And it's standing up to the 14. We'll give it a few seconds. But it looks good. Yep, it looks good. It's staying on there. So that one is telling the truth. All right, now I have a few items that I don't know if they were gold or not. But we might as well t uh, test them. You know, we've got our stuff out. We might as well test them and see what they are. So I have this chain necklace, and it's not marked. And it was magnetic. So this will probably not be anything. But it doesn't hurt to test things out. You know? And then let's try the chain. Because you never know. Now see that come up like a coppery color. Let's go for the 10K. to run there now I want to read there's something on the testing stone it says to approximate 
for the base metal content, drop tin case solution on the metal and watch for the color reaction. Brass is dark brown, copper is brown, nickel is blue, lead is yellow, and tin is yellow. Mm. What was copper? Brown? That looks like that's turning brown to me. And that looks like it's turning a yellow. Tin? I, I'm not sure. Let's try 14K. Yeah, but I don't think the chain is. Now the class was acting like it might be. Okay, 14K, 14K took it out completely. And it took out the chain as well. So, that, I don't believe, is gold. Okay. Uh, the next one I wanted to try... was this coach necklace and I read that sometimes they coat the um, charms in a gold plating so I wanted to see if they're gold plated okay so we got one from this charm let's do one from this charm And one from this charm. I'm going to make this one a little darker. Okay. Doesn't look like anything is happening. They're not changing color. Let's try 14. Okay, it's gone. So I don't think those are gold. I don't think we have gold. I am curious though to try this again with the platinum. Because it said platinum. Um, apply the platinum acid to the stone. If there is no reaction, it is platinum. Okay, if there is no reaction, it is platinum. If the scratch turns red, it may be palladium. Well, it does look like it is eating it away. But I can still see the marks but it is eating it away so it's not platinum as much as my little heart wants it to be platinum it is not platinum 
but then I'm not sure if that's 10K either because of how the 10K is reacting with the other with the other metals. But it's not, it's not really turning color. It's not changing in color. It's staying on the line. The lines are still there. But I, I'm just trying to figure out why would they put diamonds in it and then not mark it as 10K. It's just very strange to me. Hmm. All right, let's move on and do a little bit of silver testing real quick before we stop. Let's see. The one thing I was curious about was this necklace and these little rose balls. They look silver and they're not magnetic. Okay, so we got that, and let's try the little, these are the little um, dividers in between. We're going to use the 18 karat solution for testing our silver today. It should turn a silvery blue color if it is silver. And it is not. It's gone. So those items definitely are not silver. Okay, let's test out this ring that was marked 925. You remember the heart ring? That's from my thread up box. I took the bend out of it with my new ring sizer. I believe that was Thelma Thrift that had that on her channel. How to use your ring sizer to take a bend out of your ring. All right, so let's test this out and see if it turns a silvery blue color. Oh, there it is. It's starting to turn. You see? Yep, it's starting to turn a bluish color. Alright, so my camera cut off, but, um, I made a scraping off of this single earring that I had, and this was also from my thread up box, but it's marked 925, and I took a scraping from the main part, from this little dangle bit in the middle, um, from this part here, and then from the post, and it's in that order. So, let me get my gloves back on.
I need to know the trick that the doctors use for putting on these latex gloves. Okay. Mm, continuing with our 18 karat solution. And we're just going to make a line straight across. All right, so I can see that the little dangly, the little dangly scraping and this top scraping here, they've already, they've turned the blue color, but that's strange. This bottom part and the post have not. Let me put a little bit more on. Let me put some here. And let me put some here. Okay, now I'm starting to see threads of it. There's threads of it that are turning that silverish color. Now the post... Uh, I'm not, I'm not certain about the post. But the rest of it is turning that silver color. So let me try scraping the post again. And I also want to try scraping the, I'm going to try, because this is the big portion of the earring. So it should definitely be turning, you know, let's get it on there really good. And then let's try the post right here. Okay, so now we've got some big bold lines. Maybe we can see it better. Now it is. Okay, the post is turning. Let me get a little bit more on this part. Yep, the post is turning. Okay, and the main part's turning now. Okay. Can you see that? Yep. It's really starting to turn now. Yep. All right, so that is the sterling silver, and I believe that's solid sterling too. Good deal. All right, now I had a couple. This, okay, let me do this necklace because this was something I was curious about. This is from my first um, mystery jewelry video. This, uh, butterfly necklace, if you all saw that. There's no markings on it, but they just look silver to me. But I could totally be wrong. Add a little bit more acid. Mm. No, I don't think they are. I'm not getting that reaction. Mm -mm. No, it's not.
Okay, and then I had a couple of bracelets. Let's test this. I actually bought this um, the other day while I was at the thrift store. I got it for 90 cents, but each of these are attached bangles, and each bangle is marked 925. So let's do each bangle. I'm pretty certain this is, but we'll go ahead and do it. Okay, but that was a good find. They had it for a dollar ninety, and I got it for half off. So it was actually only ninety five cents. And we'll see if I got sterling silver bangles for ninety five cents. Yep, they're starting to turn that white. I'm starting to see it. That It's almost like a threading almost. It's like a silvery, whitish blue color. Yay. 95 cent sterling bangles. Okay, and um, I wanted to test this ring. That ring was also in my thread up box. I don't think this is. I, I, I don't think it is, but we'll see. No, it is not. See, it's gone. The line is gone. Everything's gone. Okay, and then I had... Where are those silver... Okay, here we go. We have a silver bracelet. This was in my thread up. So I'm going to test each... I'm going to test the... Um, this end of the toggle clasp, I'll test the chain, and then I'll test this end of the toggle clasp. So we're just going to make a line for each. This stuff is really stinky. Yep, it is. I was right. I remember somebody in the comments, they were like, oh, it's stainless steel. Could be stainless steel. Nope, it's sterling. Yay. It's not marked, but it is sterling. How awesome is that, guys? Happy, happy, joy, joy. All of it. This whole thing is sterling. Yes. All right. Now let's try this necklace. Okay, when I went thrifting, I picked this up the other day. It was $8.60, and I had half off. And I picked it up because it looked like sterling, it felt like sterling, it's not marked anywhere, but it has a layer of tarnish, and you can actually take your fingers and just, it'll just rub right off. So, I don't think that this is, but we'll, we'll test all of it. We'll just test it to see what happens. Okay, and then let's test the clasp. Mm 
Okay, I don't think the clasp is because it's not hardly do anything. Then we're going to test these. And then finally, let's get the necklace. All right, so we got four lines. We've got the, this line is the extender. This line is the lobster claw. This line is the little stations. And this line is the actual chain. Well, I'm not getting that white, and it is eating it away. Hmm. You see? Oop, don't want it to drip. Yeah, but it's, I can still see the lines through it. And you'd think that 18K acid would eat just about anything up. Hmm. It's making me wonder what is that. I can still see the lines underneath. Hmm. You know, I'm curious. I I am curious. It's not silver. But Let's try with 14K and see what happens with the necklace part because I am curious as to why that 18K didn't eat it up all the way. Okay, the 14K completely eats it up. So it's not gold and not silver. All right. Well, we can't win them all, can we? All right, then I had this bracelet. And I, it, it's very weird. I cannot tell whether these beads were metal or plastic. So we're just going to try this out. I mean, they're cold like metal. They're not... Well, if they were plastic, they definitely wouldn't do that, would they? Let's see what happens. Not silver. No. Nope. Okay, so I'm going to put my silver to the side. Not silver. try some more. It's definitely not going anywhere. You see that? It's really strange. So, 
That one I'm not sure, but I don't think it's sterling. Maybe it was coated with a, a lesser um, a silver, but definitely not, definitely not sterling. Okay, and then on this necklace, we have these little, we have these little beads. We're going to try them out. Okay. And then we have these little beads. These little round beads. Not silver. Okay. And then we have these. These were uh, in my thread up box as well. You pretty much know that these are going to be silver. Pretty much. I'm starting to see the reaction. It takes it a little a little bit for it to start reacting with the silver, but you can see the threads, that silverish blue threading is starting to come through. Now these were marked 925. These earrings, the post was marked 925. Yep, I can already see it turning. You see that? Yep. All right, so that's good. I'm trying to think if I had anything else that was not marked that I thought maybe was. Ah, uh, yes. These were some. Now this one I picked up at the thrift store the other day. And I doubt that it is, but it can't hurt to test it. And I'm going to have to quit here in a few because the... It's not fumey, but the smell is just, ugh, that's coming off of this. Yeah, that's not. It isn't. But I thought it was a cute bracelet. It's got um, these little beads in the middle that they move around. Phew, it's getting stinky in here. Okay, then I had this ring. Let's 
do this ring real quick. And this was from my eBay order. Sterling Silver, Mark Sterling Silver China. Yeah, I can see the threading. The threading is starting to turn a, a whitish blue. Yeah, it's starting to, like right up here, you can start to see how the it's starting to turn. Okay, so that was a positive reaction. And then we have a pendant that was marked. And this little pendant from my eBay haul. Yep, it's turning as well. Some of these aren't as dramatic. The the silver in it isn't, uh, the turning isn't as dramatic as some of the others. But it's got that bluish streaky threading through it. Okay, and then we had the bracelet, my Serenity bracelet from my eBay order, and that was marked 925, and we'll do the round part of the toggle clasp, and we'll do the bar part of the toggle clasp, test that, and then let's see if we can get the chain, I don't know if I can get the chain. I don't think it's long enough. Okay. Yep, and I'm getting the threading again. You can see it on there. Yep, so that's uh, also sterling. All right, and one more, and then I'm going to call it quits for today. It's this necklace. I don't think that the chain is, but... We're going to test it out and see. You never know. You know, it's just like with that bracelet. I did not expect those to be real diamonds at all. Nope. That's disappeared. It's gone. Okay, guys. So... I hope I helped some of you out figuring out uh, testing aspects. It's not difficult to do it all. It just takes a little bit of preparation. Um, it's super easy. Cleanup's not going to be too bad. Um, the diamond testing, I thought that was really fun. I like testing for the stones. Um, and that's super easy to do as well. But I got my acids the diamond tester and the ring sizer for less than thirty dollars so i would highly recommend um if you don't need a loop if you don't need a digital scale 
if you don't need all the little extra stuff that they have in these kits, I would buy your items individually because it's going to save you like $20 or $30. And I didn't need a lot of the stuff that they have in the pre-made kits. So that's why I opted to buy my items individually. Um, hope you had fun today. Maybe learn some stuff. Um, I'm going to put some links down below for uh, the testing kit, for the diamond tester, um, the ring sizer. And I'll, I'll link that video if I can, um, that jeweler, uh, jeweler video on the different diamond testers, uh, if you want to watch that as well. So thanks for watching today. If uh, you like the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button for me. If you'd like to see future videos, go ahead and subscribe and press the bell and you'll be notified when I make new videos. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again and I hope you have a great day or night. Bye!